Maybe you've gotten further on a route than you expected, but the next hold is just out of reach. And then you fall because your arms are tired and your grip is weak. Now what? Today we're teaching Ginger a new skill that will immediately level up her climbing so she can make that move. Previously on Ginger's six week challenge. A year ago, Ginger was hospitalized on a ventilator with full body paralysis due to an autoimmune disease called Guillain-Barre. Since then, she has relearned how to walk, talk, and is now ready to build back her strength and coordination. That's where climbing comes in. Her goal, climb her first V3 in six weeks. I'm Sarah and this is Meg. We're from Send Edition, where we help you feel better physically, mentally, and emotionally through climbing. Each week, we dive into a new technique to help Ginger progress and crush her climbing goals. In the last episode, we focused on the foundational movements that will set her up for success. This week, we are sharing the first skill that every climber should master. Join Ginger's six week challenge and start applying what you learn as we go. By the end of this series, you will be amazed at how much you've improved and will be ready to climb that V3 you've been eyeing. So come along and let's climb to new heights together. This episode is sponsored by Mad Rock Climbing. We started this challenge before Mad Rock agreed to the sponsor the series, so some footage in the video has Ginger using the wrong shoes, and we'll talk about that later. One thing that continues to be a frustrating point for Ginger is her lack of finger and arm strength. Sometimes she feels like she just doesn't have the strength to reach the next hold. Luckily, there is one move that should immediately level up her climbing without Captain America's secret serum or weeks of strength training. She might even be able to make the move today. Plus, she can use this new skill on almost every route. Before attempting this move, Ginger needs to understand foot placement, hand placement, and the use of her legs. She learned all about that last week, so we can move straight into the new skill. To get started, you'll need to identify footholds you can use for the move. Ideally, you have a foothold beneath the handhold you are starting on and a handhold you are trying to reach. It's not always this straightforward, but we'll take advantage of the footholds being directly below the handholds in this case. To actually make the move, you're going to squat down until your arms are as straight as possible. This will ensure that you're using your lower body instead of your upper body, and then you're going to dig your leading toe into the hold that you want to move towards and pull your hips over that foot. If you find this challenging, try to incorporate the other leg to push you away from the starting hold and towards the next hold. As your lower body shifts, you will find your entire body move. Once Ginger has tried the move and has successfully done it, it's time to actually train. There are three main ways to train for the rockover. The first one is my personal favorite, but Ginger actually said the third one was what made the biggest difference for her. Training option number one. One of my favorite ways to train this move is by doing the rocking shoulder drill. The first time you do this, find a relatively easy route, complete a rockover for each move on the route, but make sure that the alignment of your shoulders are directly below the target handholds before moving your hand. Once you feel comfortable doing this, then find harder routes to complete it on. If you want to make the drill more challenging, have your hand over the hold to ensure that your shoulders are aligned before grabbing onto it. Even if you complete this drill once as a warm up every session, you'll start to see the movement become much easier. Next one, we're gonna do really good at being straight arms the whole time. Hips to the right. Okay, left foot up, just a little bit. And stand up on that. Training option number two, the traversing challenge. Similar to the drill we did last week's video, traversing challenge places you on a wall with plenty of handholds and footholds like this wall in the kids area. For Ginger, we had her place her feet a little bit wider apart and then selected a hold for her to reach for. For this training to work, select a hold that's further away from you than where your feet are. Then reach and grab for that hold. Repeat this process by going to a hold further and further away and see how far away you can reach. The goal for Ginger is to reach the very far right orange hold. Will she be able to reach it? Well, she didn't get it this time, but with a bit more training, I'm sure she'll be able to. For you, this may be that you see how far you can move with the rock over move. That was so close. Training option number three, long root rope climbing. 
This is the training that Ginger feels helped her the most with the rockover. For this training, you'll need to rope climb with a harness. Some gyms have auto belays, so you can typically rent a harness and do this training rather easy. Otherwise, grab a belay friend. You can get on any grade climb, especially easier routes, and practice the rockover skill on every single move. Ginger explained that for her, she was able to repeat the move over and over again without worrying about how high she was getting because she didn't need energy to climb down. This helped her push as hard as she could could even when she was feeling physically tired. Now that she has a bit of practice under her belt and some training, it's time to see if she can make that big move on the purple route. And she did. She made a really big move on her project the same day as learning the move. Step up with that right foot, right hand, breathe out, there you go. Left hand, up her straight. However, there are three tweaks she can do to make this move even easier and maybe even reach even further. Tweak number one is the trajectory of the hips. It may look like when you're doing the rock over, you're just moving your hips from side to side. However, I'm actually moving my hips into the wall at the same time as moving them to the side. This will give you a few more inches to reach to the next hold. Plus, the further your hips are away from the hold, the harder it will be to grip the handholds. So this tweak will make gripping the hold even easier. Tweak number two, adjust your foot position to enable grabbing the hold with your toes and assist with pulling your leg over. With precise foot position that we talked about last week, you typically want to place your big toe on the best part of the foothold and push down to put your weight in your toes. For this tweak, you're actually going to place your toe slightly past the best part of the hold, and at the same time as moving your hips, pivot your toe down so that your toe is hooking onto the hold and you're able to pull towards that hold instead of pushing down on the hold. This will make it easier to leverage those big leg muscles to make the move. Before we test Ginger with these tweaks, let me take a moment to talk about Mad Rock's climbing shoes, the Rovers. These shoes came to me at the perfect time. I needed a pair that I could wear for an entire climbing session without feeling my feet scream at me. And the Rovers do just that. With their flat profile design, these shoes provide a neutral fit that's perfect for climbers who like to train like me or beginners who are looking for their first pair of shoes. But what really makes these shoes stand out is the super sticky rubber sole, which gives you confidence on even the smallest hold. So if you're tired of dealing with uncomfortable and unreliable climbing shoes, give the Rovers a try. They're the perfect choice for climbers who want a comfortable and versatile shoe that won't break the bank. And as a bonus, if you use the code SENDEDITION, you can get a 10% discount on your purchase. Check the description for a link to buy. With these tweaks, it's time for Ginger to try again. Wow, Ginger picked up that technique we taught her today like a pro. But like any new skill, it will take some practice before it becomes second nature on the wall. So that's what she'll be doing until our next episode. How about you? Are you going to implement the rockovers and these drills we talked about? The next skill we're teaching Ginger is one that sets newbies apart from more experienced climbers. Think of it as upgrading your climbing tool bags from the basic screwdriver to a high-powered drill. Join us on Ginger's six-week challenge to level up your own climbing alongside her.